So you're a racing fan and you just found out that some of your favorite drivers from IndyCar and NASCAR are going to be racing in the 24 hours of Daytona this year. But you don't know what that is or how it works or any of that stuff and maybe you're new to IMSA racing altogether. Don't worry, we got you. So what is the 24 hours of Daytona? Well, the Rolex 24 hours of Daytona, or as I'll just call it from now on, the Rolex 24, is a 24 hour sports car race at Daytona International Speedway in late January of each year. The race has taken many forms over the years and has been part of many different championships. Currently, it's the first race of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Series calendar. So what is IMSA? Well, IMSA stands for the International Motorsports Association, and it's a North American road racing series owned by the same people that own NASCAR. Now let's get into the basics of the Rolex 24. Naturally, the race lasts 24 hours. It starts at around 2.30 p.m. on a Saturday and ends at 2.30 p.m. on Sunday. The race takes place at Daytona International Speedway's 3.56 mile road course configuration. It's a really cool track that uses the majority of the NASCAR oval, but also has a fast infield section known as the horseshoes. Since the race is 24 hours in length, teams employ crews of three or four drivers working in shifts or stints to complete the race. But don't think that you can just stack your car with one awesome driver and have them drive most of the race. The rulebook currently states that no driver can drive more than 13 hours in total and no more than four hours of every six hour segment. But what really makes the Rolex 24 such a compelling spectacle is that it's a multi-class race. That means there are four, and now starting in 2021, five different types of race cars all on the track at the same time having their own individual race. So technically there's an overall winner, but then there's also a winner in each class. So there will be five winners. It sounds confusing, but let me explain it to you like this. So let's say that you entered a 5K foot race and you crossed the finish line in 28th. So you finished 28th overall, but you were first in your age group, meaning that you won your age group. So you won your class. See, that's so simple to understand. I just thought of the simplest way to explain multi-class racing to people. I'm really proud of that. I'm actually really proud of it. Like I'm serious, I am. So what are the classes in the Rolex 24? Well, like I said before, starting in 2021, there will be five classes. Three classes of prototypes, which are kind of like purpose-built race cars that are like rocket ships, and two GT or Grand Touring classes, which are cars that look like road cars. So let's start with prototypes. DPI. DPI stands for Daytona Prototype International, and this is IMSA's top class. It features the fastest prototype cars, and thus they compete for the overall win of the race. DPI features cars from Cadillac, Acura, and Mazda. They also feature some of the top race car drivers from around the world. Former F1 drivers like Juan Pablo Montoya and Kevin Magnussen, and former Indy 500 winners like Alexander Rossi and Juan Pablo Montoya. This year will also feature NASCAR champions Jimmy Johnson and Chase Elliott, and former NASCAR driver Juan Pablo Montoya. In conclusion, DPI is the class that you want to pay attention to if you want to see rocket ship race cars driven by some of the best race car drivers on planet Earth. LMP2. Le Mans Prototype 2 are also purpose-built race cars, but unlike DPI, they all use the same spec engine provided by Gibson, not the guitar company. LMP2 cars are a little bit slower than DPI's and must have two amateur drivers in their lineup. One more thing about LMP2 is that these exact same cars can race in the 24 hours of Le Mans. If you want to learn more about that race, you can just click right up there and uh, we have a video about it. LMP3. Le Mans Prototype 3 is a new class for the Rolex 24 in 2021. It's another prototype class that's a little bit slower than LMP2 and features predominantly all amateur driver lineups. LMP3 is fairly new to North America, but it's a bustling class in many European racing series, and we're expecting to see maybe even double-digit entries in the Rolex 24 in years to come. GTLM GTLM features vehicles based on road-going cars from manufacturers like Corvette, BMW, and Porsche. Most of the teams are fully manufacturer-supported efforts and, like DPI, feature full pro driver lineups. 
GTLM is the fastest of the two GT classes, and like LMP2, these exact same cars race in the 24 hours of Le Mans. Thus the name, GT Le Mans. GTD. Last but not least is IMSA's Pro-Am GT class, GT Daytona. These cars are also based off road-going cars like the Lexus RCF, the Porsche 911, and the Lamborghini Huracan. This class mandates a minimum of two amateur drivers per four-driver lineup and features many luxuries like any lock brakes. GTD is the slowest of the five classes at the Rolex 24, but it honestly features some of the best racing. It has become my favorite class to watch. After 24 hours of on-track battling, the winners in each class are rewarded with a Rolex Daytona watch. And then everyone goes to sleep for like two straight days because they've all been up for like 40 hours. So that's the gist of the 24 hours of Daytona. Hopefully now you can watch this race with a pretty good idea of what's going on. But like any sport, there's lots of little nuances and rules that you're gonna learn as we go. I'm a seasoned pro at watching this race and there's still stuff I learn every year. What are some other races that you'd like a beginner's guide to? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're a NASCAR fan watching this video, you can check out a video we made about NASCAR teams that have owned sports car teams by clicking this link right here. And be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can catch the weekly FBTT podcast right here on YouTube, or you can listen on Spotify. Thanks so much for watching.